In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the new and cool features that you need to know in Microsoft 365. Are you ready? Greetings my fellow YouTubers, welcome to the channel, Andy here, Microsoft MVP as well as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. Well, this week I did it. I just uh, stuck my foot in the water, as they say, with shorts. So there's three or four shorts out there. Uh, I'd love your feedback about them, so go ahead, click on them, let me know what you think. Again, it's just experimental. Now, um, gosh, things are moving fast in the Microsoft 365 world, and there is a whole host of new features popping up all over the place. So in this episode, I thought we would take a look at just some of these features that I think you definitely need to know. So if you haven't subscribed, then come on. There's only 24% of you currently subscribed. So come on, click that subscribe button, ring that bell, and come and join this great community that I'm trying to build out. Now, questions, comments about this, of course, or any of my other sessions, then just get them down below. I love those. All right. I think without any further ado, I think it's about time we jump in with some demos and let's take a look at some of these features. Now, one of the features that we've had traditionally in Microsoft Exchange Server was the ability to recall messages. So I'm delighted to say that it's now available in Microsoft 365 and Outlook. So here users will be able to go into Outlook and go into the sent message and recall it. And this is particularly useful. Maybe you just don't want the message to be sent or maybe you want to recall it for the fact that it's no longer appropriate. Well, this combined with the fact that you can also schedule messages to be resent is a really welcome feature in Microsoft 365. Now, with so many new features recently, it's easy to miss the odd setting that slips by you. And this is definitely one for me. So I'm going to come into my organizational settings here and I'm going to scroll down. And in here we have something called Microsoft Scripts. So if you use Microsoft Excel, you'll be very familiar with the likes of automations. And automations here allows you to use Office Scripts uh, with things like Power Automate. And more than that, what you can do as an admin is you can come in here and you can actually allow those scripts to be run either by everyone or only specific groups within the organization. So if you're a little concerned about security, then the office script admin settings are definitely something you want to take a look at. Now, a really important feature that I want to draw your attention to. Uh, first of all, I'm going to come in here into Microsoft Entra. Of course, Entra is the new portal for all things identity in Microsoft Azure. I'm going to come up here into Protect and Secure, and I'm going to come down into Authentication Methods. I want to draw your attention uh, to something that's pretty important here. In January 2024, legacy multi-factor authentication and self-service password reset policies are set to be retired. Um, so we have a new migration portal here. And you can come in here into the migration portal. And essentially, there are three options here. So pre-migration is what you're probably currently at. So if you're using the old kind of MFA, the old um, self-service password reset options, this is probably what you're at, at the moment. Um, if you want to use both, so if you want to, you're in a migratory state, you want to keep continue using those but you want to bring across and kind of a halfway house then this is the option for migration in process of course we also have the migration complete and fundamentally this will switch off any legacy policies so folks make sure that you check out this it's super important before january next year and there is an excellent learning document here that you can find on docs.microsoft.com um, and it gives you all the details there. Now, of course, it didn't just mean new features. I also meant cool features as well. 
And if you've got an E5 subscription to Microsoft 365, or in fact, an E3 with the voice add-on, then of course you can take advantage of things like uh, phone calls or PSTN, public switch telephone networks. And I can come here into Alex. And one of the interesting things that you might want to do is uh, you'll notice here that we have a voice tab. Of course, you've got things like meeting settings here. Now, note that, of course, some of the upgrades available, Teams Premium is now available. Check that out. And there's also a 30 day trial on that, too. Um, now, if I come into my voice settings here, it's amazing how many people don't fully understand this and get the most out of it. But basically, a couple of things here. Now, it's not just the license that you need, but you also need a calling plan. So you can go into 365 Marketplace and you can buy billing credits. But of course, you can also take advantage of Operator Connect, which is the new Teams feature. So if you're outside, for example, a Microsoft 365 zone that doesn't do the PSTN, you can have a local um, operator service take care of all of this for you. So it's a bit like a mobile phone plan. You get so many credits per month and you get so much to spend between your users. Um, so you've got that. Now, <clears throat> the plans typically come either domestic or they become international. So you can set that for your users uh, here. In this case, you can see uh, for Alex, it's actually set to all destinations. And just a couple of tips when you're setting this up for uh, answering. So do you want to ring Alex's devices? So if he's got multiple devices, Absolutely. But what if Alex is member of, uh, let's say, a sales team? Um, well, do you want it to be immediately forwarded? Um, also, you can actually say, hey, are you going to allow, for example, a group call pickup? Are you going to delegate his call? Are you going to simultaneously ring another number? or ring a different user. So for, for example, maybe Alex has got a, a colleague or a partner or a, an assistant. Um, you could also take advantage of group call pickup. And this, this absolutely rocks. So I can manage the uh, users in the group. So I've gone ahead and you can see I've added in Adele, Cameron, Alan and Jean-Luc here. And you can see, OK, how do you want them to be notified? So if you were in a call center, um, do you want their devices to ring or do you just want a banner to pop up and so on? Also, things like simultaneous ring or do you want them to ring in the order that they appear in the rows? So you can choose that option. So once you've set that up, I have now managed my call group and it will then uh, get answered by all of my users there. And if unanswered, and you can basically put the timing in here, so beyond that, it can then go, let's say, to voicemail or something like that. But if you're in an organization with, let's say, for example, a sales team, then this is fantastic. So up next, what I want to do is have a look at Microsoft Priva. Priva, I hear you say, I've never heard of it. Well, yes, you have actually. You can find it here in the Microsoft Purview or Compliance Admin Center. And essentially, this is privacy risk management. So within an organization, it may be necessary that you maybe want to do a data subject request. Um, GDPR, for example, in May 2018, uh, announced that uh, anybody, a data subject within or outside your organization, if you store information about that subject, I have the right to come in and ask uh, what data you're holding about me. So you can come in here, you can deal with data subject requests here. Just one note, by the way, they're not free. So data subject requests, you can buy them either individually as a block, a block of 10 or a block of 100. So the data profile tab is fantastic because it lets you at a glance see where all your PII is stored or personally identifiable information. And it shows you where it's stored within Microsoft 365, along with a map of exactly where it's stored in the world. It shows you how much data is there and also it shows you the categories of that data as well. 
Now, one of the first things you're going to want to do is go into the settings page here. So when you're pulling off reports, uh, one of the things you're going to want to do is either decide whether you want anonymous reports or um, personalized reports with users' names. Um, do you want to be notified by email? Do you want to integrate Great it with Teams, for example. Uh, do you want to enable things like data matching? Now, with the data matching, you can go in and you can add in your own sensitive information types. But again, there may be specific sensitive information types or a personal data scheme, which is very relevant to you or your location. So again, it's great to see that you can add in your own schema or object types here. Um, you can also configure your own retention policies here as well. And again, you can also create your own privacy review tags. So definitely check out the settings page. There's some very cool and useful uh, stuff there. Now, I'm going to head down to policies here. And you can see here we haven't created anything yet, but we do have an option to create some policies. And you can base this on data overexposure, data transfers, data minimization, and you can also create a custom one. Now, I, I gotta be honest, like most templates here, um, most of these can be customized. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna create a data overexposure policy. And what this does is it looks at all of your data and it determines, hey, you know, we recommend that you may, for example, want to put a sensitivity label on that, or you want to be careful where you store that data. Now, you can go in and view the various settings. So it gives you kind of a nice overview. It explains uh, what the policy is actually doing. And as you can see, it's looking to protect you for things like GDPR. But of course, uh, you're quite within your right to go into the settings yourself. And of course, you can edit any of these and customize them as well. Now, if I click into next, you can see you can choose classification groups. And again, it adds kind of what it thinks are the most popular ones here. So you can go in here and this particular tenant, by the way, is based in the US. I'm happy with this, though. Um, you could, of course, um, create your own. You can customize it as well. I'm quite happy that this is fine. So I'm going to click on Next. And am I looking to monitor all users and groups or just specific users and groups? Again, in this case, I'm going to monitor all. Um, am I going to look at things like OneDrive, SharePoint, all SharePoint sites. Again, you can also choose specific SharePoint sites as well. And in uh, obviously things like conditions, um, again, obviously for overexposing potential data, it's really quite important that you monitor all of these different potential profiles. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead, click on next, and do I want to be sent a notification? Yeah, I think that's a, a pretty good idea. How often do I want those notifications? I can get a preview of that. And again, if you've got a, a privacy training URL, you can put that in there as well. Again, I won't bother with this just now. Um, do you want to create alerts? So again, I can come in here and I can say, okay, every time there's a hit against um, an element, do I want to be alerted? So again, you can control that. You can set the number of instances, the frequency, and you can also set the severity for those alerts as well. So as with most policies, do you want to go ahead, test it out first, or do you want to go and turn it on right away? You know what? I think we'll test it out first. It's always a good idea. Okay, so you can see we get a nice overview of everything and it's pretty robust. You can see it pretty much does include uh, all those privacy features there. And I'm gonna click on submit. Okay, so that will now switch on um, and it will go off and it will start collating data. And of course we can then start pulling off reports. Now. Um, as you can see here, I've got my first rule up and you can see everything's looking pretty good at the moment. Uh, again, that so that was the um, I was looking for data overexposed. 
You might want to monitor data transfers. Again, pretty useful. Uh, as well as things like data minimalization. So I honestly think you would probably have all three here as well. Now, as I said, this is currently in uh, preview, so it's now active. And um, it is a separate license, that's the downside. So it's an add-on to Compliance Manager. So definitely check it out. This is Microsoft Priva or Privacy Risk Management. So there you have it, just a few of my quick tips and tricks for Microsoft 365. Some of them new, but definitely all of them cool. All right, hey listen, if you enjoyed it, I love your feedback. Make sure that you put that down below. And if you've not subscribed, then go ahead, bum that subscribe button, ring that bell, and come on join this great community. That's it for this time. I'll see you soon, take care. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.